Hello, Rivermont. Today we continue our study of the Apostles' Creed with the phrase, Maker of Heaven and Earth. That is, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of Heaven and Earth. Now, what do we mean when we declare that we believe that God is the Maker of Heaven and Earth? Well, what we are doing is we are declaring the biblical concept that God made everything out of nothing by the word of his own voice. He commanded it. He spoke and it came about. The Westminster Shorter Catechism puts it this way, is that creation is God's making all things of nothing by the word of his power in the space of six days and all very good. Now, this is clearly a biblical concept. If you turn to the Word of God, you see the Scripture continually pointing us to the fact that God is the creator of heaven and earth. That is, using these two extremes, heaven the highest, earth below, and that means everything in between. God created everything. That's what we mean when he, we say he created heaven and earth. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Psalm 102, verse 25, we read, Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In John chapter 1, we read, All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Hebrews chapter 11, By faith we understand the universe was created by the word of God. And in Colossians 1, verse 15, for by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. You see, very obviously, the word of God tells us that the Lord is the creator, that he made all things. Now, there are a few implications that we can draw from this that Scripture itself draws from the fact that God is our creator. And the first one is that because God is our creator, he has the right to be worshipped and glorified by us, his creation. Scripture makes this connection most, uh, most particularly when it is in relation to the Sabbath day. You see, the Lord created the heavens and the earth in six days, and yet on the seventh day, he rested. And he ordained that uh, because he rested on the seventh day, that we would rest as well. And that in this rest, we would worship and glorify him. God created us. He created this world in which we live. And he has ordained that on the seventh day, we would rest and worship and glorify him as our creator. The second implication is that God is sovereign. He is in control of all things. You see, there's nothing that exists apart from his will, apart from his purposes. And therefore, he has the right, the authority, and the power to control all things, to bring all things under his sovereign rule. This truth is reflected in Romans chapter 9. When Paul speaks of God as the potter having rights over his clay to do what he wants, to fashion the clay into any type of vessel that he desires to. And that means that God, as our sovereign creator, has the right to create us, to make us the way that he desires, and we must submit to that because he is our good creator. The third implication is that as our creator, God has the right to be obeyed. You see, the Lord has given to us his moral law. He has laid out for us the right path for us to follow. He created us and he has created the ways in which we are to walk. And because he is our creator, and because we declare that we believe in him as the maker of heaven and earth, we also are declaring that we believe we should obey what he has given us to us. And fourth, it means that he has the power to bring about a new creation. He brought about the first creation, and yet we know that by our sin, by our rejecting his good and right law, that we have brought brokenness and death to his very good creation. 
But because he is the creator, he has the power, he has the right to bring about a new creation. And we know that it is through the Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead that this new creation has been begun. When Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, he inaugurated this new creation era in which all who come to him in faith will be joined to him. And even the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 will come about. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You see, in declaring that our belief that God is the creator of heaven and earth, it gives us a foundation for understanding how a new creation, a renewed creation, will be brought about. And that through faith in Jesus Christ, the old has passed away and the new has come. And so, as we declare on Sunday mornings, as we join our hearts and voices together in the Apostles' Creed, saying that we believe that God is the maker of heaven and earth. We are declaring our belief that he is to be worshipped, that he is sovereign, that he is to be obeyed. And ultimately, we are declaring that he will bring about a new creation through his son, Jesus Christ, in whom we look to in faith. Let us pray. O creator God, we worship you, we honor you, we glorify you. And we thank you, O God, that you are such a good and gracious creator, that you have given to us this world, and that you have placed us in it for your honor and your glory. May we live to that end all the days of our life and unto eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's in his name that we do pray. Amen. Well, now the Lord bless you, Rivermont, until we get to see each other again face to face.